Hello, 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 everyone. Good evening. Welcome to the Central Florida Consortium of Private School Counselors powered by StriveScan. My name is Sabelle. I will be your facilitator for this evening's session. I am super, super excited to get started. We have some amazing colleges and universities here. Uh, they're going to tell you a little bit about themselves. They have a lot of really cool information to give you in such a short amount of time. We do have about a 45 minute session going on for this virtual college fair, and uh, it's going to be fun. Remember though, this is uh, just an appetizer of each school. So it is up to you to take some notes, ask some questions, get some contact information going uh, so that you can do your due diligence and get to know them a little bit more afterwards as well. Now, before we get started, I just have some uh, housekeeping items to remind you all of. Just remember this virtual college fair is a webinar format, which means that you are muted and your video is turned off. The panelists cannot see or hear you. So you're probably like, well, Sabelle, how in the world do I ask all my questions? Well, that in and of itself is a great question. Use the Q&A button. If you look at your Zoom toolbar, somewhere towards the middle, you'll see a Q&A button. You can click on that and type in your questions to the presenters at any point in time, okay? Now, with that said, again, we do have a short session, about 45 minutes on the clock. So with that said, please do not wait until the last minute to ask those questions, ask them throughout so our representatives can go ahead and get you some of those answers. Now, sign up for more sessions, okay? This is one out of many college presentations. We do have one other time slot happening right after this one for this particular uh, consortium. So check the schedule on the website to sign up for that. And if you'd like to relive the fun, or maybe someone in your family or a friend wants to check out these schools as well, no worries, because all the sessions are being recorded. And you can check out those recordings at strivescan.com backslash Central Florida. With that said, I'd love to get started. Our first university up for this evening is Oglethorpe University. guys um <clears throat> nice to see everyone let me get my screen share here going and we'll go ahead and get started with the presentation okay so quick introduction my name is ethan hockland i'm an assistant director of admission here at oglethorpe and i've been here for about four years uh and this is just a quick uh preview of what oglethorpe university is like so in general, Oglethorpe is a small school located in the city of Atlanta. When I say small, we have just under 1,500 students total. Average class sizes are 17 and nothing is bigger than 25. So it's a pretty small, intimate campus, but you're utilizing all the resources that Atlanta has to offer. Atlanta has a lot of great opportunity for students to do different research, um, internships, and just different ways to be involved in the community. So there's never a reason to be bored, but there's also so many opportunities for you to advance your career while you're in college. Now, some of the highlights that we like to uh, talk about here at Oglethorpe include small and engaging class sizes. Um, so we have um, an average class size of 17 and a student and faculty ratio of 15 to one. Um, so what this really means is that your professors and your classmates are really gonna get to know you, what you're passionate about and what you want to be doing. Um, all of our teachers here at Oglethorpe, all of our professors, their number one priority is our students. So they're not doing like big research facilities or anything like that. Like, um, and you're not gonna have a class with a TA, you're gonna have a genuine connection with your professor. We are an applied liberal arts and sciences institution. Um, so that means everything that you're going to learn in the classroom, we're going to make sure that we, uh, you know, apply that to your career um, and, you know, how those soft skills really translate. Most popular majors include business biology, psychology, communications, physics, engineering, and theater. We have a very dedicated and caring advising staff here at Oglethorpe. Over 40% of our students are first generation, meaning they're first in their family to ever go to college. So we man make sure that everybody at Oglethorpe has the support that they need to find success within their first year. Uh, we also have a lot of opportunities for you to be involved in the city of Atlanta and beyond. So the A-Lab is our Atlanta Laboratory for Learning to enhance your experiences outside of the classroom, whether that's like an internship or a study abroad opportunity or research. Um, the possibilities are endless with the A-Lab. Now, a lot of our students do do internships while they're here at Oglethorpe. These are some big name companies in the city of Atlanta that our students use um, and utilize while they're there. But 93% uh, of our graduates have a full-time position or are in grad school within one year of graduating. That's actually higher than the national average. So we're very, very pr uh, proud of our placement rate. 
Um, so a lot of our seniors take advantage, especially, uh, you know, the CDC being in Atlanta, I'm sure a lot of us are very familiar with the CDC right now. Um, so being able to utilize those sort of connections and get that experience on your resume before you even graduate is great. And sometimes um, for our graduates, it turns into a full-time position. Um, so it's definitely something that our graduates tend to take advantage of. Um, now we have a, a, a number of different financial aid opportunities available for our students. Um, a lot of those are merit-based, need-based. Um, we do have music, uh, music scholarships as well, as well as an IB diploma program that we offer for students um, for scholarship for those who uh, receive that. Um, for my Florida students specifically, you guys will qualify for the out-of-state HOPE equivalent. Um, and you also can use your Florida prepaid as well at Oglethorpe. The last thing that I really like to highlight is our uh, flagship 50 program. The flagship 50 states that if a student meets our scholarship criteria, we guarantee they'll pay no more in tuition and fees at Oglethorpe than they would at the flagship institution. So for my Florida residents, that means you can go to Oglethorpe for the price of the University of Florida. So Oglethorpe's tuition fee starts at $44,000 and uh, US tuition is $6,380, if I remember correctly. So that's about a 37,000 um, or maybe a little bit more um, scholarship that's guaranteed for all of our students. All you need is a 3.8 GPA or a 1400 SAT or a 30 ACT and you will automatically qualify for the flagship 50 for all four years here at Oglethorpe. Now, the admission process is actually pretty straightforward here at Oglethorpe. You can apply one of two ways, either on the Common App or the university application. There's no preference on either one. The two types of applications we offer are early action and regular decision. Early action means you'll be considered for all full tuition scholarships, but it is a non-binding free application. But in general, we have rolling admission here at Oglethorpe, so there is no deadline on our application. Um, so as long as you submit your application and you submit your high school transcripts, that's actually all we need in order to give you a decision. Other um, uh, optional admission criteria include submitting ACT and SAT scores, doing a qualitative interview with an admissions counselor, or submitting letters of recommendation. We will accept up to two letters of recommendation here at Oglethorpe, but in general, we have a holistic application review which means we take everything into consideration. So um, your essay, your letter of recommendation, whatever you're involved in, everything you submit will be con uh, considered in your decision. Um, but it's a pretty straightforward process. And you do, uh, if you ever have questions or get confused about it, you can always feel free to ask us. Um, and that pretty much concludes my presentation. So in order to stay connected with us, you can uh, email this email right here, admission at oglethorpe.edu. And we'd love to be connected with you on social media as well. Um, so you can follow us on Instagram there um, or our Facebook or Twitter pages. Um, the Ogle class of uh, 26 is our incoming senior class posting really great stuff there, really informative. So I'd even check it out, even if you're not a graduating senior this year. Um, but without further ado, I will pass it back on over. Thank you so much for your time. All right, awesome. Thank you so much. If you have any questions for Oglethorpe, please put it in the Q&A. Next up, we have Rhodes College. My name is Zoe Scott with Rhodes College. I'm not just a Rhodes admission officer. I'm also a Rhodes College alumni, and I'm here to talk to you guys today about my alma mater. Except we're gonna start from the top of the program. So, when you come to Rhodes College, you will be discovering your Rhodes Edge. Now, what is the Rhodes Edge? Aside from a cute little selling point, the Rhodes Edge means that we are producing these well-rounded individuals. These are students that are intellectually ready leadership ready, graduate school and career ready. So let's talk about Rhodes. First things first, we are a small liberal arts school located right in the heart of my hometown, Midtown Memphis, Tennessee. Now, what sets us apart from a lot of liberal arts schools is that we are in this gorgeous metropolitan area and we really want our students to take advantage of it. So when we talk about our students, we are talking about the 2000 undergraduate students that stay on our campus. I know we are a small school, small but mighty. We have over 45 different states and 55 different countries represented on our cute little campus. So, like I said, we are located in the heart of Midtown Memphis. You are five minutes away from absolutely everything whether it is researching elephants at the Memphis Zoo or doing childhood cancer research at St. Jude Children's Hospital, our students have these opportunities because we're located in a major city. And that's just a picture of our campus. Now, when it comes to housing, nearly 100% of our students will stay on campus in their time on at Rhodes. And we really pride ourselves in that. Like I said, we're a small community. And one of the building blocks of that is our students staying on campus. 
So when we say small, we mean it. Our average class size is 14 students. Now, when I say 14 students, I mean 14 students. We like to joke, you can't get away with not doing your homework, but your professors are there to support you. All of your classes will be taught by a professor. You can have a TA, but your TA serves more like a tutor and less like a professor. So now we are a liberal arts school, which means we push our students to think outside of their major. I was a chemistry major, but in addition to taking my chem courses, I fulfilled my foundations credits. Now these are the credits that kind of task our students with, like I said, thinking outside that box. So we want everyone to take a writing course or a natural sciences course. So that's just a quick peek at our foundations curriculum. But of course, we are in the city of Memphis. We don't want our kids just to get an amazing liberal arts education on campus. We want them to go out into the city and get engaged. So 80% of our students will complete internships at some point in their undergraduate career. But of course, we do, for, we do ask that our students try some type of research. Now, when it comes to research, it is not that hard to get involved. All of our professors, no matter what department, have some aspect of research to their curriculum. So whether you're a music student that wants to uncover the punk rock scene from the 80s in Memphis, or you're a Kim student talking about the nucleocapsid protein on coronavirus, our students are doing amazing research. It's not just on campus, it's off campus. We're one of the only undergraduate schools in the country that has a paid research program with St. Jude Children's Hospital. But of course, it's not just in our city. 75% of our students will study away at some point in their undergraduate career. And one of the prime reasons we have such a high number is because when you go abroad, you don't just take your sunscreen and your bug spray. You can take your entire financial aid package with you when you go abroad. So we incentivize students getting that experience. Now, of course, we have over 100 different clubs and organizations on our campus. Small campus, but lots to do. Whether it's sports, we're getting involved with community service. I mean, we have been named uh, one of the most service-oriented schools in the country. Now, when it comes to graduate rates, 96% of our graduates as of 2017 are either employed, attending graduate school or professional school or volunteering full-time. So we are in the, one of the top 11% of schools when it comes to um, undergraduate students pursuing graduate school. We are also one of the top 10 schools for medical school acceptance with 75% of our pre-med students getting accepted into their top choice program. But I mean, of course, that is Rhodes College. We are in my hometown, Memphis. I mean, I could brag about us all day and brag about my hometown. But let's talk about how we do admission. So we have a holistic review process, which means we don't compare you to kids from other schools. We're a common application school, meaning you just submit the common application. We don't have any supplemental essays or fees, and we only require two recommendations, your teacher and your counselor. All right, and that is Rhodes College. Do we have any questions? Awesome, thank you so much. If you have any questions for Rhodes College, please put it in the Q&A. Next up, we have Hendricks College. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. I hope you all are having a beautiful day. Here in Arkansas, it is snowing slash having freezing rain, so I hope your day is a little bit warmer than mine. So my name is Whitney Lewis. I am your admission counselor. I'm also an assistant director of admission here at Hendricks College. We are located right in Conway, Arkansas, just 35 minutes north of Little Rock, Arkansas. So let me go ahead and share my screen and I'll tell you a little bit more about Hendricks. All right, so this is a beautiful backdrop of our campus. I encourage you to definitely visit and maybe a little bit warmer weather, uh, but this is a beautiful backdrop of our wonderful campus here. We are a four-year private liberal arts college, similar to other colleges that you've heard this evening, um, but we are a liberal arts college, which means you will be taking a, a plethora of different types of classes to help you become a more well-rounded individual. Um, it's really, I, I always like to say, putting on a, a separate set of lenses to let you see new perspectives of the world. You'll be learning skills like decision making, critical thinking skills. Um, for example, if you're working with patients in the medical field, you'll, you'll need to be able to know how to work with patients and to communicate with the team. So like those critical decision making skills, you'll learn a lot more um, inside and outside the classroom as well. Here on our campus, we have a 16 for an average class size and a 10 to one student to faculty ratio. This means that we breed personal uh, relationships and innovation, collaboration at the same time. We have been named one of the most innovative schools by US News and World Report. 
Innovation can come through a number of different ways, like research and a couple of other of our programming that I'll get to in a second. We are also part of the organization Colleges That Change Lives, just one out of 40 in the country. We are very honored to be part of this list. And if you don't know where to get started on your college search, I would definitely encourage you to check out uh, that resource. All right. So a little bit about our numbers and programming. I did mention about um, just a little bit about our, our numbers, 10 to one student faculty ratio. Here are some demographics for you. Uh, we are just over 1,100 students. So that means if you're looking for a smaller school, but not too small, uh, this might be the right fit for you. Geographic diversity, we have students from 38 states and a small pocket of international students. So while we have quite a few students from Arkansas, we have students from all over the United States and across the world, which really breeds, again, that uh, diversity across our campus. You can see our numbers here are just over 330 for the class of 2025 from this past year. Uh, but I would love to get to our programming, which really distinguishes uh, Hendrix. Uh, again, like I mentioned earlier, we breed innovation. One way that comes to that is called the Hendrix Odyssey program, in which every student gets to participate, no matter what major or year, um, hands-on learning experiences, whether it be a study abroad experience, or maybe it's a research experience, like one of our students studying chocolate production in Europe. The best part about Odyssey is that there is available funding for each and every student when doing uh, funding or doing projects outside of campus. So they're already working on grant proposal skills. Another significant way of how our students gain life experiences along the way, not just in academics, is through a program called Career Term, in which this is required for every sophomore student. Sophomores get to come back a week early before spring break begins in that semester. And they learn a host of different skills like professional communication, personal branding, even networking, networking with alumni that will graciously give back their time to the campus. Again, learning life skills along the way and already getting connected just as a sophomore student. Now, in terms of the application process, it is straightforward. And also we have a free application process. So no fee waiver is necessary. Uh, we are found right on the common application. Uh, so I do encourage you to complete that. We do require just a high school transcript along with the essay found on the application. And we are test optional. Uh, we were test optional before COVID began. And I do encourage you, if you have multiple tests, go ahead and send them over. Uh, we will super score those uh, to go ahead and put in our system. Recommendation, uh, recommendation letters are optional as well. And our first deadline is November 15th. You'll get a decision beginning December 15th. If you go ahead and get everything in by November 15th. Now for you rising seniors, uh, you'll have to wait until um, August to go ahead and apply. But we do want you to at least go ahead and apply because once you start applying for admission, you're already applying to be considered for a merit-based scholarship and a program uh, called Tuition Advantage. Tuition Advantage is that as a program where you'll be considered to where we can match the published tuition and fees from the flagship institution in your home state. So for my Floridians, it's University of Florida. Um, so I do encourage you to go ahead and apply. Again, no risk involved. You're already applying for a couple of scholarships, so why not? And of course, we do encourage you to submit your free application for federal student aid. Uh, but overall, we do offer generous merit-based, need-based aid as well. And if you consider for full scholarship consideration, we do encourage you to apply by November 15th. Now, if you have any questions, this is my contact information, my text line. I always say that I have the luckiest number with the triple seven in the middle. Um, so go ahead and take down my number, my email. I'll go ahead and put it in the chat, um, but we are open back for visits. So feel free to sign up for a visit and then apply later on. And I'm gonna go ahead and pass it back to um, Sybil. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. If you have any questions for Hendrick College, please, please, please put it in that Q&A. Next up, we have Savannah College of Art and Design. All right. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Taylor Mathis. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions for the Savannah College of Art and Design, uh, and a place that I'm proud to call my school, uh, and also a place that I work for. Uh, so SCAD was founded in 1978, and for more than 40 plus creative years, we've grown to become the most comprehensive and connected art and design university in the world. SCAD has a very diverse creative community of over 15,000 students representing all 50 states, 
in more than 100 plus countries. Uh, matter of fact, 25% uh, of our student population is international. This is always the worst part when it lags. Sorry about it. So when you're accepted to SCAD, uh, you're accepted into all SCAD locations where you can study seamlessly quarter by quarter. Uh, you can begin your SCAD journey in SCAD Atlanta, uh, which is in a thriving and business and innovation hub. Some of our backyard neighbors are some pretty big Fortune uh, 100 and 500 companies like Coca-Cola, uh, Delta, um, Google even has a headquarters there located in the South. Um, tons of great opportunities for our students. Uh, and then you can circle back to the beautiful historic city of Savannah, where it all began. It's actually where our largest student population is. We have over 10,500 students just located in Savannah. Uh, and then we also have a permanent 10-week study abroad program that a lot of our juniors and seniors use as their capstone or for a refresher uh, when they need a seasonal change. And then with SCAD Now, our online degree program, you can virtually study wherever you feel comfortable at. Comfortable at. Uh, so what's really cool about SCAD is that we really leave it up to the student to design their own educational path. Uh, so at SCAD, you're, up to, you're able to pick up the two majors and three minors. Uh, what a lot of students do is that they pick majors and minors that are going to be supplemental into the specific industries that they want to go into and the specific industries that they want to change. And I don't know if you guys know this, but on average, uh, people that double major, it only takes them two to three more classes than someone that just pursues a uh, straight up bachelor's degree. Uh, so SCAD is a nonprofit private university uh, with academic degree programs recognized nationally and internationally. Uh, we're accredited by a regional accreditation called SACS, uh, which credits Duke, Vanderbilt, and University of Texas, Austin. So we take the same academic curriculum as those prestigious academic schools I just named, just in an art and design setting. So this is the most important thing, which I'm, I'm sure all of you are wondering, uh, if I'm going to be able to get a job after I graduate school. So regardless of what major you choose, uh, I don't care if it's art history, user experience design, uh, regardless of what major you choose, career preparation is at the heart of SCAD's mission. 99% of our spring 2020 alumni were either employed or seeking for, the, seeking for their education, both within 10 months of graduation for the fourth year in a row. And for the fifth year in a row, this upcoming spring, we're about to hit 99% employment rate in creative fields for the fifth year in a row. Uh, so SCAD is also one of the only universities in the United States that offers an in-house creative consultancy. Uh, what SCAD Pro is, is a 10-week internship held on both of our campuses in Atlanta and Savannah, where we collaborate with some pretty big brand name companies and Fortune 500 companies. Uh, just last year alone, we collaborated with over five, we did over 500 collaborations with over 300 top brand name companies. Just last quarter, our students worked on the future of flying cars for Uber. They've helped doctors and nurses during this pandemic with 3D printed PPE masks. And if you saw the Super Bowl two weeks ago, we created the visuals for the Super Bowl in this upcoming 2022 FIFA World Cup. It's led to over 200 direct job offers, not internships, but direct job offers uh, for our students who have participated in SCAD Pro. So at SCAD, even though we are a growing university, uh, we champion a culture of small class settings and individualized one-on-one -on -one attention for our students. Uh, at max in your foundation study, the biggest class size that you'll ever have uh, is 30 students in a class. And once you get into your major, it's 20 students or less. So yes, your professor is going to know you by name. Uh, they're going to get to critique you and help you uh, to reach your full potential while you're here. So that's all I have for the presentation today. If you want to talk more in detail about scholarships and financial aid, there's so many opportunities. Over 80% of our students are on some type of scholarship at SCAD and over 88% of them received some type of financial aid. Uh, and I think what's a big game changer for us, for students in the state of Florida, Florida uh, is that we accept Florida Bright Futures and Florida Prepaid. Um, so if you wanna get in contact with me, just swipe that QR code uh, and we'll get connected. Awesome, thank you so much. If you have any questions for Savannah College of Art and Design, please put it in the Q&A. Next up, we have Kenyon College. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Kate Fetterman. I am one of the senior assistant directors of admissions, and I've been at Kenyon for about three years. Um, so Kenyon is located in Gambier, Ohio, and that is central Ohio. It's about an hour north of Columbus um, and about an hour and a half south of Cleveland. 
So when students come, um, if they're not driving, uh, they will fly into one of those airports um, as both are accessible. So as you can see from the slide, um, we do have around 1,700 students. This year we are sitting uh, a little larger at 1,900, um, but most years it is around that 1,700 mark. Um, so about 27% of our students do come from the Midwest, but we, our largest population of students do come from large metropolitan areas such as Chicago, um, New York, and LA. So students from Kenyan uh, come from 48 states and 49 different countries. And then the campus itself uh, sits on a thousand acres, but 600 of those acres are um, part of our Brown Family Environmental Center. Um, so we are rural um, and we are a small private liberal arts institution and we are fully residential as well. We're one of the few uh, colleges in the country um, where all students live on campus all four years and housing is provided all four years. Um, so there we go. All right. So as you can see on the screen, um, it is some just general information, but what I want to share with you um, is our mission statement and our purpose. So what we say at Kenyon is that we're here on purpose um, and our location is part of our purpose. So we are really intentional community. Uh, no one just drives to be in beer. Um, so we wouldn't move anything to the left or the right or else we wouldn't be Kenyan. Um, so our location makes us who we are and who we want to be. So the rural setting that we do have allows our students to focus on academics, focus on building a community, which is why we're 100% residential, and really gain uh, you know, friendships and also relationships with professors uh, over their four years. So our students faculty ratio, as you can see, is 15 to one. Um, our largest class size is going to be around 30 students, uh, but as you start getting into more advanced classes, that drops to, uh, it can drop to four students in a class as well. So another thing is that we're great intention people, and I, I kind of mentioned this, but we really push each other in and out of the classroom. So everything on campus is designed um, to make relationships between staff and faculty and faculty and students and students and staff. So everything from the way that we only have one dining hall, which is Pierce um, on campus, which uh, right now is only students eating in, but that faculty and staff eat in as well. Um, and then also how our senior staff is structured too. We just wanna make sure everything is collaborative and we're all in this space, um, as I mentioned on purpose. So we wanna make sure that these four years um, are really something to remember and really help our students uh, be prepared for life after Kenyon. So lastly, uh, you know, we talk about how good writing is good thinking. Uh, we are known as the Writers College. Um, so all students will learn how to write. So whether you're in bio or whether you're in political science, you will be writing because it's important how to know um, how to communicate both verbally uh, and also the written word as well. So we wanna make sure again, that students are prepared for life after Kenya. So just from this slide, it's just a quick area of study. All this information can be found on our website. So then lastly, um, just a little bit about admissions and financial aid. Um, the biggest thing to note is that we do meet 100% of demonstrated need for both domestic and international students. So what this means is that, uh, you know, Kenyan costs this much, you can only afford this much, you and your family. Kenyan will cover the rest in a combination of loans, grants, and scholarships. Um, so all students when they apply are um, considered for a merit scholarship. Uh, about 20 to 25% of our uh, admitted applicants do receive one. And this year they do range from 10 to $25,000. Another thing to note is that we only have early decision. We have the two different deadlines, um, November 15th and January 15th, and then we do have regular decisions. So we are not an early action school. So if you are going early decision, that is going to be a binding agreement. Um, so we do require this uh, CSS profile and the FAFSA, and that just helps us get a better sense of your family's financial um, so thank you for being here tonight, and I will go ahead and put my information in the chat if you do have any questions, um, 
and I would love to help walk you through the application process or financial aid. Awesome, thank you so much. If you have any questions for Kenyon College, please put it in the Q&A. Next up, we have Washington College. Thank you, I'm really excited to be here tonight with everybody. Um, my name is Skylar Kuhn, and I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions at Washington College, which is located in Chestertown, Maryland. And I also work with all students from the state of Florida. So if you do have questions, I'm the person that you would go to. So um, Chestertown is over on the eastern shore of Maryland. If you check out this map over on the left-hand side of your screen, you can see that Maryland is kind of this funny shape because we have the Chesapeake Bay coming up the state. So we're on the eastern shore, which is a little bit more rural. Um, we are right on the Chester River. So part of our campus is riverfront and we're about a 10 minute walk from downtown Chestertown. So the college buildings are kind of peppered throughout downtown. And then we do have our boathouse, which is about a 15 minute walk from campus. Um, this is where students can take out kayaks, canoes, and paddle boards all for free. Um, and we use the river a lot as one of our resources. We also are not too far from some major cities. So you can get to Washington, DC, Philadelphia, and Baltimore, Maryland in about a 90 minute drive. And then New York City is about a three hour drive. Um, Annapolis is the state capital of Maryland and that's about one hour away. So students might go to some of these bigger cities when they're doing things like internships or maybe even just for a day trip. And we are a small private liberal arts school. So it's a little bit less than 1100 students total. Um, we have over 80 different clubs and organizations. So there's a lot of things for our students to do. And being a smaller school, your average class size is going to be about 12 students. Um, the largest that you would have at Washington College would be maybe 30 students. This is the full list of our majors, minors, and areas of concentration. Um, so we have a lot of different offerings, but our five most popular majors are business, biology, psychology, environmental science, and political science. About half of our students will do at least one additional thing besides just their one major. So we do have a lot of students who double major or add minors or areas of concentration. And when you apply to Washington College, you're not applying into a major, you're just applying to the school. So you have until the end of your sophomore year to actually declare your major. These are the five pillars that make up what we call our Washington College standard. These are just five things that we focus on a lot. And I'm going to briefly describe some of the ones that you're seeing. So we do have three signature centers at Washington College. These are ways for students to get more experiential, hands-on learning opportunities. And they're open for everybody, regardless of your major. Um, the written word, we do have an identity as a writer's college. We give out the largest undergraduate writing prize in the country every year to one of our graduating seniors. It's called the Sophie Kerr Prize. And all of our students complete a senior capstone experience their last year, which is like their undergraduate thesis, and it often involves a lot of writing. The first of our three signature centers is the Rosa Neal Literary House, which you can see in this photo. We have three antique printing presses here. They bring in a lot of visiting author, authors. Um, and then they have that scholarship that I mentioned, the Sophie Kerr Prize. And then for environmental action, um, just being where we are right on the bay, right on the river, we do have research vessels that our students will go out on. We have a river and field campus, which is basically like this big living laboratory that students will go to for their labs or maybe for independent research. Um, and then we also have this really great program called Chesapeake Semester, which is kind of like study abroad, but it's within the Chesapeake Bay watershed. For history informing the future, you can see students standing on the docks in downtown Chestertown. The reason that we're called Washington College is because George Washington was one of our founders. So we were founded all the way back in 1782. We're a very old historic school, um, the first college founded in the state of Maryland. And the Star Center for the Study of the American Experience is another signature center that we have that a lot of students interested in political science, pre-law, history, and communications will all utilize. They have a lot of great paid summer internships. For Learning Without Limits, um, we do have a lot of study abroad programming options, and that's always very popular with our students. And then in terms of internships, the majority of our students will do at least one with us. Um, and our Career Center works with you all four years, actually reaching out before you even set foot on campus. And then lastly, for Meaningful Connections, we are a majority residential school, so you would plan to live on campus for all four years. Um, you're going to get to know other people really well at Washington College. And these are some photos of student life. So you can see the river there, you can see inside of our dining hall. 
Um, I want to point out that picture on the top left. That's one of our traditions every year. If you haven't been to Maryland, you might not know this, but blue crabs are really big here. We have crab feasts. So this is one that's put on by one of our fraternities every year. So we do have Greek life on campus. And then these are some photos of some of the experiential learning opportunities that I've mentioned. And then a little bit more of the surrounding area here in Chestertown. We are division three in athletics and we're in the Centennial Conference um, with some of the other mid-Atlantic schools. And we do have some more unique sports. So being on the river, we have varsity rowing, varsity sailing, and then we also have varsity trap and ski, which you don't often see. And then a little bit about our application. Um, we are on the Common app, and then we also have our own institutional application. There's no fee to apply. Um, we have our three decision deadlines here, and we do a very holistic read as well. We are test optional, so if you wanted to go that route, you're more than welcome. And if you have a question about this, you can always reach out to me as your admissions counselor. I'm happy to have those candid conversations with you. Um, we also give out a lot of merit aid. So the majority of our students receive merit aid and that can range up to $30,000 a year for all four years. If you're a member of National Honor Society, you're guaranteed at least 25,000 in aid. I'm happy to speak more about that too, if you have any questions. And I will turn it back over to Sabelle. Awesome, thank you so much. If you have any questions for Washington College, please go ahead and put it in the Q&A at this time. Now we do have a few extra minutes, so I actually would love to invite our uh, representatives back on video to see your beautiful faces because I have a really important question to ask all of you actually. Now my question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we're just gonna go in presentation order. So Oglethorpe University, you're first. Yeah, thanks. Um, so my advice to anyone going through the college search process, I think it's very easy um, to have a very limited scope on colleges that you're considering. Um, and speaking from personal experience, like I grew up in South Georgia, and so I was very accustomed to the only schools that I knew were the ones very close to me. Um, and then also like my big state schools like Georgia Tech and UGA. Um, so just being mindful of that, like, make sure you're applying to different types of colleges, whether it's public or private, large or small, midsize. Um, you know, whatever majors they may be offering and make sure you're going to visit those schools um, because you re really don't know like what opportunities are going to be afforded to you. Um, and another thing like financial aid, you know, um, you may look at a school like a private school like Oglethorpe, for example, and think that we're going to be out of your price range, but realizing after you apply that it could be way more affordable than schools that you're accustomed to. Um, so in, in my, my one sentence answer is to keep an open mind. For sure. Love it. Thank you. Rhodes College. First off, great answer. I was going to say something pretty similar. I would definitely say think, think about a school that you could grow at. I mean, it's not just where do I see myself my freshman year. Think about a school that kind of grows with you and allows for academic flexibility, per se. I mean, interests change. You might want to explore. I mean, I started off bio pre-med and ended up chemistry pre-food science. And I was at a school that allowed me to grow and explore. So, I mean, I say look for a school that allows you to grow and explore and has room for change, you know? I also would say step outside your comfort zone. <laughs> Definitely step outside your comfort zone. If it's you thinking, oh, that's too far from home or, you know, or in some case, a lot of people don't wanna to go to school in their backyard. I challenge you to step outside your comfort zone when considering colleges, because I mean, college is, the whole process is four years of stepping outside your comfort zone. So, yeah. Awesome, thank you so much. Hendricks College. So a couple of pieces of advice. I would say, number one, try to visit as many colleges as you think that you can squeeze in in this semester or over the next year. Um, I know that a lot more colleges are becoming more open with their visit policies. Um, like at Hendricks, we have become more open. We're allowing visitors to eat in our dining hall. We're super excited about that. Um, so try to visit as many colleges. And then when you're visiting, try to, instead of trying to memorize all the information that they're telling you, really try to seek out and think about, would this place give me joy over the course of four years? And I think 
that's something that's often missed in the college search process is that will I be happy here? Can I, can I, can I feel like I, um, you know, have joy every day? So um, besides thinking about that, also talking with as many different students and professors as you can um, to really get their perspective. Love it. Thank you. Savannah College of Art and Design. Uh, I definitely agree with what everyone said. Um, all of these colleges that are represented tonight are some excellent academic schools. Uh, and we know as admissions advisors that there is a college for each and every individual. Definitely go out there and visit as many colleges uh, as you can. Definitely request information and programs that you're interested in because the last thing that any of us want you to do uh, is spend the next four years of your life being miserable and not enjoying what you want to do or if it's not your vibe or your city. Um, if you go visit a college and you don't hear any of the programs or internship opportunities or employment opportunities from that college, uh, if you don't hear anything that sparks your ear or catches your interest, definitely think twice before spending the next four years uh, at that institution or university. Uh, but everyone here has given some excellent advice. At the end of the day, it's all up to you and what you want to do in your life. Love it. Thank you. Kenyon College. Yeah, so I just want to echo everyone, um, but this experience is really meant to be fun and don't lose sight of that. Uh, you know, this is a great time to explore and take advantage of everything that um, the different institutions have to offer. So visit as much as you can. And uh, like Taylor was saying, you know, every college and university has a different personality, just as we all do. So keep that in mind um, when you're going through this process that as much as you may want to come to one of our institutions, um, we also want to make sure that you're the best fit for us as well. So this is definitely a relationship. And if you do have questions, that's why we're here. And that's um, why we have a job. And, uh, you know, don't, don't hesitate to reach out to any of us um, if you do have questions. Fantastic. Thank you. Washington College? Yeah, everybody's already said so many great things, but um, my piece of advice would be don't just check out the school, make sure that when you're doing these college visits, you're also checking out the surrounding area, because again, it's, you know, that place where you're going to be for the next four years. So make sure you feel really comfortable with, you know, all facets of it. Um, and then as Kate just mentioned, all of us are here to help. So every school has an admissions team. Um, their job is to help you through this process. So if you have questions, you know, no question is too small. Um, there's no such thing as a dumb question. So reach out um, if it's a professor that you want to talk to, if you want to be connected with a current student, you know, that's our job. So just let us know what we can help with. Awesome. Thank you so, so much. Uh, you heard it here first, everyone from the experts. Uh, they definitely do this day in and day out and are here to answer your questions. And so they just, just, you know, gave so much advice. And I know I learned a few things as well. And I hope you all did too. So my panelists and presenters, I just want to say thank you so, so much for being here. It's very appreciated. My participants and my attendees, thank you so much for being here. Remember, this is just step one out of many steps, right? It is an appetizer. So now it is time to do your due diligence for that main entree, aka the school that you will pick, right? So with that said, again, thank you. Just real quick before you leave, after you close out this window, Remember the words very quick are literally on the screen. So five questions, just give us some feedback. We really do appreciate it. Sign up for more sessions. We do have one more session happening this evening for this consortium. And then remember, if you'd like to catch the fun again and uh, check out some of these schools once more, a recording will be available at strivescan.com backslash central Florida. With that said again, thank you everybody. And I hope you have a great night. Bye everyone.